Now, Democratic Congressman Tom Malinowski of New Jersey, who also served as an assistant secretary of state for democracy and human rights during the Obama administration. Congressman, we appreciate you joining us today. I, I know that you were born in Poland. Uh, today's attack was very close to the Polish border. Just your reaction to what happened today and, and whether the U.S. should be doing more to stop Russian aggression. I think they did this because we are doing more. Look, the, the Ukrainian military, these brave defenders of Ukraine, have inflicted more casualties on the Russian invaders than, um, than we suffered, than the United States suffered in, through the entire Iraq war. They've killed more Russians in 17 days than we lost in Iraq, potentially more than we lost in Iraq and Afghanistan over many, many years. And obviously, Putin is frustrated by that. And I think what, is, what happened here is that his generals are desperately trying to find, uh, to, to, to show him that they're trying to do something about the, the supply of weapons from the United States, from Western Europe, that is enabling the Ukrainian troops to inflict such heavy casualties on the Russians. So it's, it's awful, but it's not surprising. It doesn't mean that the Russian army is any closer to Western Ukraine. There's, they have absolutely no way of getting there if they can't even take Kyiv. Um, so I, I think this is, as grisly as it is, it's, it's, it's more evidence that uh, the, the supplies that we are getting to the Ukrainians are having a very lethal and effective uh, effect. Would you anticipate a more direct message from the Russians? I mean, the Russians have threatened any convoy that carries military aid into Ukraine, essentially. The base that was attacked today, we know, was one that was a, a hub for, for that equipment. Is this strike today a warning from Putin to the U.S. not to send more equipment in? And, and how can the Allies respond to this? Well, it's, it's perhaps, but it's not going to work. I mean, obviously, we know that if we're, if we're giving the Ukrainians highly lethal military equipment, that they are using to kill Russians, then of course the Russians are going to try to target that equipment. That's war, and we need to understand what we're what, what we've gotten into here. We're not directly involved with U.S. troops on the ground, but we are arming Ukrainians to kill Russians, and they're doing it very, very effectively. And the Russians are upset, so that's what happens. Um, but it's absolutely not going to deter us. In fact, we saw the administration uh, just just yesterday announced. $200 million more in, in equipment. And, and I think we've been very smart uh, in, in what we're providing. We're, we're, we're not responding to uh, whatever's on Twitter uh, at any given moment. We are talking to the Ukrainian military, and we are giving them the, the weapons that their troops actually need, not the sexy stuff, but the effective stuff that they actually need to be successful. Um, and, and I expect that to, to be stepped up. What's particularly important now, by the way, uh, anti-aircraft systems. And, and the Eastern European countries have some of the more sophisticated Russian origin anti-aircraft systems, the S-300 system, for example. Uh, I know the administration uh, is, is, is scouring the world, looking for any country that has those kinds of systems and offering to help to get it into Ukraine to protect against these kinds of attacks. We've had current and former members of the Ukrainian parliament on our air. We've heard from President Zelensky that what they really want, what they believe they really need, is a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Obviously, Secretary Blinken, President Biden have both said, no, that's not going to happen. At the same time, there are members of Congress who have said that there should be a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Uh, what's your view on this, and, and what action is it going to take to actually turn the tide to bring this to an end? I think the tide is turning, uh, um, but my view of a no-fly zone is that it would be the, the highest risk, lowest reward option uh, on the table. Highest risk because it would mean the United States going to war with Russia. People, should, people can be for it, but they should say that that is what they are for, the United States firing the first shot in a war with Russia. We would have to target Russian air defenses on the ground in Ukraine and potentially in Russia and then be prepared to shoot down Russian aircraft in dogfights over the skies, over, over Ukraine. Uh, and lowest reward because most of the devastation that we are seeing in cities like Kiev and Mariupol and Kharkiv is not coming from the sky. It is coming from artillery and on the ground. It's coming from rocket fire, missiles fired from the ground. So to have any impact on that and no-fly zone 
would immediately have to become a no-drive zone, with the U.S. Air Force firing on every Russian unit they see on the ground surrounding mm -hmm. these cities. Again, if you're for that, okay, but be aware of, but, but say it, be honest about, about the fact that you're advocating for the United States to, to get involved in, in a war directly with Russia. And finally, I would say, I, I, think, I think Putin wants us to get involved uh, in, in a way. The, the Russians don't want to, there's no motivation in Russia to be killing Ukrainians. And this is one reason why the Russian army, I think, is slowly disintegrating in, in Ukraine. I think I just, there is more motivation to fight the United States and NATO, and, and I don't want to give them that, especially if we can help the Ukrainians win with the kind of assistance we're providing. We have just a few seconds left, but I do want to ask you, uh, you worked on human rights under the Obama administration. Does what we're seeing from Putin now amount to war crimes in your mind? And, yes. and if so, what does the world do about that? Totally. Uh, they are indiscriminately firing on um, residential areas in big cities, and they're doing it because they want to kill civilians. There's no question in my mind about that. What should we do about it? We need to win. We need to help the Ukrainians win. We need to make sure that this terror is defeated. And that is what I think the Biden administration, with help from Congress, is, uh, is on the way to doing here. And we need to stay the course with determination and some confidence in the power of what we are already doing. Congressman Tom Malinowski, we appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir.